Welcome to part two of getting started in Movie Edit Pro 2021 Plus and Premium. This tutorial follows on from part one and covers some of the important things to know about setting up Movie Edit Pro, including help, program settings, project settings, and the three screens of the user interface. After part one, you should now have Movie Edit Pro 2021 installed, updated, and the additional content downloaded and installed. A third Getting Started tutorial will show the user interface in more detail and give definitions of projects, movies, and objects. If you're only somewhat familiar with Movie Edit Pro, you may also want to watch my tutorials on basic editing, parts 1 and 2. I'll use the term map rather than saying Movie Edit Pro each time. I've started map and we're on the startup screen. I'll start a new project with the name Seasons. Note that the Movie tab also says Seasons. I'll change this to Winter. Just to show objects on the timeline, I'll import two videos and a photo. I'll click on the Optimize Timeline button to see all three objects and select the first one, which will turn yellow. Let's look under Help in the top menu. There's an on-screen help file that can be activated here or by pressing F1. This is a Windows-style help file with contents, index, and search. Under Search, you can type a word or term into the box and search for it. This help file is the same as the PDF manual, also found under Help. Select Download Manual PDF. After downloading it, move it to a secure location and maybe even put a shortcut on your screen to open it. I strongly recommend that you read the first part of the manual up to the end of Quick Start to better understand how the program works. Open Map and follow along. Reading and using the manual will save you a lot of time and frustration. Still under Help, after watching this tutorial, you can click on Show Introductory Video Online. This will get you to the tutorials on the Magic site. I suggest that you watch them all. Of course, you should watch mine as well as I usually go into more detail. Another place to get help is magics.info multimedia community. Still under help, there's a selection for checking and updating to the latest patch. We already saw the message indicating that there was an update and we updated. The last item under help is about. This gives you the program name and version number as per the latest patch installed. You can also see your serial number, which of course you should keep confidential. Again, Never give or show anyone or post your serial number on a website. The Magic's community forum is public, so never post or show your serial number or your email address in the forum. Let's check the program settings before continuing. I'll go to File, Settings, Program. This opens the program settings. There are six tab pages. The Playback tab gives you some selections for audio playback. You'll probably be best with the Wave Driver. Popping down the Output Device box, we see a series of selections. I have an external audio interface, M-Audio M-Track, but you'll probably want to have the output sent to your computer speakers. Take note of the other parameters. The important one is spacebar behavior. I'll check the box so that the playback marker stops and stays where the playback marker is located when I press the spacebar to stop playback. Otherwise, the playback marker goes back to where it was when I started playback. The Folder tab contains the default locations, several of which we set up during installation, remember? If the first one does not have projects at the end of the path, navigate to it to set it. Note the others. The last two are for setting the external audio editor and the image editor. By default, the audio editor is Music Editor 3 and the image editor is Photo Designer 7, both of which come with Map. You can change the audio editor to another Magix project, like SoundForge Audio Cleaning Lab or SoundForge Audio Studio, which may have come with your version of MAP. At the bottom left, you can add paths to the VST plugins. These should be VST2 64-bit versions. The Video Audio tab shows the video standard that we saw in the startup screen, NTSC or PAL. Under Timeline, you can select a simple object display but I prefer to see more frames. I also like to see the half waveform display of the audio part. By default, MEP keeps the video and audio together on one track. 
I prefer to see the audio on a separate track, so I'll uncheck this. I also like to see the vertical guidelines on the timeline. I like to have the waveform created during import, and I definitely want to have sound imported with video. If you have problems with MPG video files having the audio out of sync, you may want to automatically create the frame table during import. Standard picture length is the default duration of a photo when imported onto the timeline. The default is 7 seconds, and I find that far too long, so I've changed it to 4 seconds. Under System, note that Save Automatically is turned on. This is actually a backup of the project, and not the project file, which you should save often yourself. Backup files are created at the selected interval. There are 10, numbered from 0 to 9, and then they repeat. If your project file should ever become corrupt, go to File, Load Backup Project, and load the most recent version. Note the other parameters on this screen. Under Display Options, under Video Mode, Map will have detected your video card. Should you have problems with video showing up black on the preview monitor, you can try changing the second option. If that fails, try changing the first option to Compatibility Mode. Note the other parameters, but leave them alone. Under Import-Export, if you have problems, like the videos being black, uncheck Hardware Acceleration for Playback if possible. Magix has indicated that they've used a new technology for hardware encoding during playback in MEP 2021 and have activated this feature by default. Older video cards may have problems with it. Take note of the other parameters. We're finished with Program Settings, and now we'll look at Project Settings. File, Settings, Movie, opens the Movie Settings for the project. We saw some of this during startup. The first tab, Movie Settings, shows these settings and some options at the top. If you're having playback problems with your video clips, you may want to turn on Automatically Create Proxy Files. By default, you get 32 tracks showing, but you can get more or less if desired. Note the other parameters. The Movie Information tab gives you some information about the movie, including the files used. The Project Settings tab allows you to add in some notes, a date, and select a thumbnail for the movie. Okay, let's have a quick look at the user interface. There are three main windows, the Preview Monitor, the Media Pool, and the Project Window. The Preview Monitor is where videos and photos will be displayed. This monitor does double duty as the source monitor. You can use it to preview videos or photos before importing them, and then view them once imported. The media pool at the right has five tabs at the top. The import tab is where you have access to files in your computer, in particular video, photo, and audio files that you'll want to use in the project. There are four other tabs, effects, templates, audio that will contain purchased audio content from the last tab, the store. The bottom part of the screen is the project window, commonly referred to as the timeline, and I'm in timeline mode. This is where we build the project. The project window consists of tracks into which you can bring in objects, like video files, photos, and audio files. There are three modes. Timeline, which is what we see now. Storyboard, which only shows videos and photos from track one and Scene Overview. In Timeline mode, you can scroll down to see more tracks. The three windows can be resized and moved. If ever these windows go awry on you, press on F9 to reset them to the default. This only works if a single monitor is used. When working in a dual screen, F9 returns any changes made to the layout after startup. Well, that's it for now. You still have some reading to do in the manual. Then go on to part three. Thank you for watching.